valvetime.net. Hi, and welcome to a Valve Time Review. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the long-awaited source recreation of Half-Life 1, Black Mesa, or Black Mesa Source as some still call it. The mod began its life back in 2004 when a group of Half-Life fans felt the Half-Life Source re-release by Valve was below their expected standard and decided that Half-Life deserved better than a quick engine swap. They chose to remake the game that started it all. Eight years have since passed, leaving a bunch of trailers, missed release dates, and even a few leaks. <coughs> yeah, and, uh, sorry about that. Now, a few days ago, on September the 14th, 2012, the mod was finally released for the gaming community to enjoy. Was it worth the eight-year wait, or does the original Half-Life still rule the roost? Let's find out. We'll start by saying that the opinions discussed in this review are based around our impressions of the mod as a comparison to the original Half-Life game. Now, on to the review. Gameplay. Firstly, Black Mesa definitely makes a good effort to replicate much of Half-Life 1 with the primary themes of gameplay remaining loyal to the original game, with all the weapons, vehicles, and a majority of the set pieces making a return in glorious high definition. While Black Mesa looks identical to Half-Life 1 on the surface, don't be fooled. There are a number of key differences and subtle changes which impact the feel of the game in quite a significant way. Weaponry played an incredibly important role in the first Half-Life. Every weapon in the roster was enjoyable to use and had an impressive level of feedback for the player using it. In Black Mesa, the opposite is apparent. Few weapons are particularly satisfying to use. Most of the guns don't have enough kickback, and the crowbar swing feels as if Gordon is slightly tapping headcrabs to death, while the snarks and hive hand feel totally useless and have no feedback or impact whatsoever. The Tau Cannon, Glue on Gun, and .357 Revolver are amongst the only weapons with a satisfying level of feedback for the player. Poor accuracy on weapons such as the MP5 would be fine if the grunt enemies didn't have increased damage and long-range aimbot while using it, a feature which serves only to frustrate the players to many annoying and unfair deaths, even on normal difficulty. Half-Life proved to be the master of pacing, with the gradual introduction of enemies and weapons which kept a balanced learning curve throughout the entire game. Many of the initial introductions, such as for the alien grunt or receiving the crowbar, have been modified for the worse. The sequence which has the player find the crowbar is delayed until significantly later, meaning in its place is a silly sequence where you run around with flares while waiting for the security guard to shoot. For such an important part of the game, and as an introduction to a new enemy, it falls a bit flat. Successfully, feeling as if our hero protagonist Gordon has become a spectator who is happy to sit back and watch someone else take care of his business. Narration Black Mesa does score points in the narrative department for being exactly what it says on the tin, a modern, up-to-date retelling of the story of Half-Life and the Black Mesa incident. From the inclusion of every key narrative moment, to every subtle appearance of the G-Man, and even adding retconned information such as the appearance of Kleiner and Eli in the Anomalous Materials Lab. One thing we will say is that we feel there is definitely a few missed opportunities in regards to the inclusion of other retconned information, such as the inclusion of Magnuson in the canteen room, or some information regarding Barine as the administrator, but we won't hold it against the developers, it just would have been a nice addition for the long-term fans. Now on to the negative. As a narrative-focused series, it is important for Half-Life games to engage the player through strong, well-animated and voiced character performances, or through subtle hints and clues to the wider world and conflict. Black Mesa features little of either, with most of the strong visual themes removed completely. While the NPCs are mostly competently animated, poor voice work helps to damage any kind of immersion in the game world or believability in the characters and their personalities or struggle. The voice work is mostly subpar for a recreation of a game which is held as a pioneer of strong narrative pacing in video gaming. The exceptions are the many lines delivered by male scientists or security guards, many of which do a reasonable effort to replicate the charm of the original work by Harry S. Robbins and Michael Shapiro. The rest of the voice work is very substandard, with it being obvious most actors were given little direction, motivation, or feedback from their peers or their team leaders. This really is a shame because we believe that there was some room for good voice acting talent to break through as one of the high points of Black Mesa. If we look at the example of the enemy soldiers, we heard that the developers deliberately wanted their actors to voice the soldiers terribly in order to avoid the player feeling empathy towards them. After playing through Black Mesa, we can definitely say we believe this idea to be totally confusing nonsense as it has only served to make the enemies feel token rather than making them seem like a present and real threat to Gordon and his mission. Most of the characters feel hollow and two-dimensional, which is a shame since the Source Engine's facial animation system provided the developers with the potential to make some really interesting and well-animated characters. Presentation We'll begin by praising Black Mesa's level of attention to detail in terms of visuals. 
The game features a frankly impressive number of original assets as a huge level of totally new textures, models, skins, and sprites help bring Half-Life into 2012. On the other hand, presentation is definitely another area in which Black Mesa wavers between the good and the odd. Black Mesa is like an attractive person with a poor personality, nice to look at but can be grating to spend a lot of time with. There's no denying that the visual details added to the levels are nothing short of beautiful, and it's immediately clear that a lot of effort has gone into these models over the past eight years. Half-Life looked great for its time, but was simplistic enough in its visual design so that an objective or goal was always obvious. And the same can be said about Half-Life 2 and its episodic sequels. The same cannot be said for Black Mesa, where any and all visual design seems to have been thrown away in order to make areas look as nice and as detailed as possible. Areas such as the labs or landa complex are now over-detailed, to the point where finding a simple button on a control panel can be difficult and confusing. We've already mentioned how bad the majority of the voice acting is, so we'll move on to the sound effects, many of which are rather low quality. It seems as if the enemy noises and sound effects have been designed to mimic that of the original game, but unfortunately the recreations are superficial. They are forgettable at best and at worst poorly implemented. The music, while entertaining, can sometimes feel inappropriate to both the environment and mood, while also sometimes not fitting the Half-Life universe as a whole. Many of the tracks, however, are extremely well made and regularly add a new twist to many classic Half-Life action sequences. Among our personal tracks are Questionable Ethics and the Credits theme. One small thing we should mention is the way songs can occasionally be a little too loud, with certain sequences overpowering dialogue from NPC characters. Performance Performance is yet another area where Black Mesa shines a positive torch, but is slightly dimmer beneath the surface. We were impressed by the mostly long levels, which kept the game flow moving at a fast pace by removing the constant loading apparent in the original Half-Life. When the game does load the next map, you can expect load times to be around 2-3 to three times longer than Half-Life 2, which is sort of understandable due to the longer nature of the maps and the level of complex detailing in each environment. Good level optimization ensures a steady frame rate through most of the game, with, with most being a crucial word. There were several times during Black Mesa where, for no apparent reason, our frame rate would drop incredibly low for a short period of time, severely sapping our level of immersion. Certain set-piece moments were ruined by this issue. Moments such as the tram crash were intended to be big, explosive, and exciting set-pieces, but instead are reduced to PowerPoint presentations thanks to poor optimization in these areas. As usual, we played Black Mesa on several mid- to high-range PCs, all of which had these low frame rate issues at varying points throughout the game. Another major performance issue we encountered included multiple crashes to desktop most of which appeared totally random. Loading up a save only to have it crash 20 seconds later over and over quickly becomes a big annoyance. As for bugs, well, we definitely encountered our fair share of odd game-breaking bugs. Next time you're playing Lambda Complex, try shooting some bees from the hive hand into the number nine portal. Enjoy losing all your guns. Conclusion. As we said earlier, our scores here are based off of our impressions of Black Mesa as an example of exactly what it should be, a recreation of Half-Life 1. Now, the scores. For gameplay, we gave it a B-, while narration gets a C+, mainly due to the poor voiceover direction. Presentation gets a C+, while performance got a B+. Overall, we think a B- is fair. Needless to say, we're just a little bit disappointed. While we did enjoy a lot of Black Mesa and its content, our enjoyment was regularly interrupted by a number of issues which slowly spoiled our experience. From the stiff weapon animations, to the poorly delivered voice lines, and the jarring changes to level and visual design, Black Mesa feels a bit like a wolf in sheep's clothing. It might look and sound a little bit like Half-Life, but it feels like a totally different beast than a true retelling. We would recommend players treat it as a totally separate and original game than a remake of the original Half-Life. We definitely feel the need to praise the mod team and their work they've put in. It's clear they love the original game and have worked so hard for many years to craft their own retelling of the game we all know and love. The mod still deserves a recommendation and it is definitely worth a playthrough and the mod team has done a great job at bringing their vision to life. We just wish a little bit more time had been spent playtesting or polishing certain elements. When Black Mesa truly resembles Half-Life, it's a beautiful thing. We just would have preferred a few more of those moments. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos and news in the near future. Bye for now.